because the script is very complicated, there are a lot of plots. Do you get on your part or just the whole thing to get the major idea of what's going on? Um, we, we get given all of the scripts, um, usually, and then we have a script read-through with uh, the majority of the cast, um, so as we can kind of have a rough idea of what's happening. Uh, we usually do sort of episodes one to five, and then we try to do uh, six to ten, but sometimes everyone's filming, so it kind of gets more tricky uh, when filming starts. So we usually do one to five all together, since we know what's going on. And then it's up to you. I usually don't read the later scripts. I just read my parts because then when I watch it, I don't know at the end. So um, yeah, I quite like that suspense. And then I kind of watch it with the rest of the audience, and I'm kind of on my on the edge of my seat as well. <laughs> yeah, I think one of, one of the great things about it because there's so many uh, characters. Uh, I mean, I I read the scripts as they come in. Same same as me. Uh, but when I do actually get to watch it. It's like watching it as a fan because you've only got you know you've got your couple of scenes, two or three scenes per episode or whatever it may be. So when you get when you get to see it, there's so many people you don't work with. It's it's like watching it as a as a fan. It's brilliant. I really like it. So you know, not only am, am I in it, I, I I get to watch it as a fan, which is fantastic. It's it's unusual. Really, Mitty you started very young at the series, so did someone censor the, the script for you when you were younger? I mean, there are a lot of things, I mean, sexual violence happening in the series, or you just let it and try to imagine how the world looks like? Um, in, in series one, uh, episode seven, there was a big kind of scene at the beginning, which um, we, were in, <laughs> we were in the read-through, um, and me and Sophie both sat through all. And during the retreat, they cut down a lot of the stage directions and stuff, so it's not quite as detailed as it, yeah, explicit. <laughs> um, so when it got to episode seven, David and Dan, the creators, came over and said, "Look, you're you're welcome to sit out for this bit." And Isaac sat out, and um, our parents said that you can sit here if you want. And we didn't have a clue what they were talking about, so we went through the script and reading it. And we were like, oh. Oh, okay, right. So what did you do? Just cringing really badly. <laughs> My mom was like sat behind me. I was like, this was a bad idea. I should have done. <laughs> but you yeah, learned hard, you learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've learned from it now. <laughs> do you wish some someone, a character from from the series, was dead? Like you hate the character so much. I get on well with all of the cast. So it would be. <laughs> 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 the cast. Yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, if they were not on the show anymore, we wouldn't them as much. Um, I don't know, I think, um, no, a lot of the Lannisters don't really deserve to be here anymore. Uh, yeah, and, and then a lot of the other people that I wanted dead uh, kind of died. I mean, like, Viss <laughs> Reese, he's gone. I think, yeah, I think there's probably everybody in the world, uh, not just Westeros, but everybody in the world wants Joffrey dead. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can understand it with Jamie. Jamie, who a lot of people hated, even even the people in the show hated because he's a Kingslayer uh, and an arrogant man and all this sort of thing. Um, uh, I'm, I mean, to give you an example with, about changing sympathies. I mean, when Brienne was about was about to be um, taken away and, and raped, uh, which he doesn't have to do anything about, and he saves her, and for his trouble, for doing a good thing. His hand is cut off. That, that, that's what I love about the show. It's not somebody gets rewarded for doing something good. He actually got the complete opposite. For doing something good, he lost his hand, his sword hand. And, and, uh, and, that's what, and, and so your sympathies shift. Now, how you would make Joffrey even slightly sympathetic? Do you like prefer him? to research and oh, yeah. read the books, or you prefer to follow the director's imagination more? Uh, well, my, both of my parents, my mum and my stepdad, have read the books and they've told me roughly what happens to Arya, but I know that a lot of things have changed and my story already is very different to uh, what's, what's happened in the books. So, um, I think when all this is over and the Game of Thrones uh, finishes, I will go back and read the books because I want to see what really happened to my character and, and how it was supposed to go. Um, but I think it would be useful to know uh, maybe more background history on your character to read the books or things like that. Um, but I think it just gets too confusing and as well you don't want to get your hopes up for things. So we don't know what's happening in season four. If I were to go and read the books I'd think loads of different things are happening and they might not.
it just doesn't accurate to keep my, you know, my enthusiasm up. I, I don't really want to know where he goes. I like these things to be surprises. I mean, even in this season, I, you know, first of all, we, we, we thought he was dead from the Battle of Blackwater. He shows up as a surprise. Each time it's these, these surprises. And, and I, I like to be surprised when I read, read the scripts. Um, it keeps my enthusiasm up. Um, and, uh, and I'm genuinely interested in where this journey, uh, journey goes. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I, it, keeps it, it keeps it fresh. And, and also, if you read the books, you may, uh, you know, as Maisie said, something that happens in the books may not be happening in, in the show. So you don't, you don't want to be playing something that you know where the journey ends while you're doing it, because that may not be your journey at all. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing the character in the scripts, so I'm not playing the character in the book. Would you like to uh, live in uh, the world like that one described in uh, the George Martin saga? To live in that world? Yes. You must be kidding. <laughs> You're out of your mind. It's horrific. It's absolutely horrific. Uh, no, no, no. That kind of, well, that obviously, that medieval world is justice uh, ain't a good thing there. It's, Justice is difficult to find. Uh, no, I'd much prefer waking up in the morning and having, having a cappuccino than waking up in the morning having my head cut off. Uh, no, no, I would not like to live in the world. I like popping in and popping out. But uh, no, that's not a world for, for uh, civilized human beings. It's tough.